Okay, so uh, welcome. Um, my name is Jukka Zitting. Um, I come here from from a company called Day Software. It's a Swiss uh, content management vendor. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about Apache Tika, um, how to do text and metadata extraction with it. So, um, what's the problem that we're going to try to address here? Um, basically, um, the issue is that that uh, in a number of cases you have all sorts of files. Um, around um, in various different kinds of formats. Um, and you want to be able to, to, to extract the text from within them. Uh, how, how do I kind of get what ins what's inside this PDF document that I have on my disk or, or uh, what's, what's inside uh, this, this uh, PowerPoint presentation? Um, and, and typically, you want to feed it into a search index, uh, but you may also want to do something like, like text analysis or, or or other kind of stuff with, with the text. Another part of the pro problem is being able to extract um, metadata about the document, uh, about the, the documents. So, so and, and to be able to annotate parts of the document, for example, to say that, okay, this part of the document is actually a hyperlink to another document, or that this part of the document is a title, so, so it's probably something that's important or kind of for more, more advanced use cases, being able to, to annotate the document that, okay, this part uh, is the name of a person. So um, the solution uh, that I'm going to present is, is, is called Apache Tika. It's an Apache project uh, started uh, from, from within Lucene and then recently graduated into a TLT of its own. Uh, I'm going to cover quickly the, the project basics, um, basically the management level overview of what we're doing, uh, and then dive into um, the details of how you can actually use Tika and what Tika can do for you. So um, basics, um, it started a couple of years ago. Um, basically, people have been doing this, this kind of extracting text from, from documents and, and metadata from documents for a long time. Basically, as long as there is there have been search engines or, or kind of uh, cases where you want to uh, reuse the document um, in context um, outside of, of, of the kind of um, where, where the original application um, is being used. So for example, you have an Office document, and if you want to use it uh, outside of, of your, your Microsoft Office or, or iWorks, um, uh, application, then you need to do something like what, what Tika is doing. Um, and there are a number of, of, of tools and libraries and, and, and both open source and, and, and commercial for, for doing this thing. Um, but typically they all, all the most of them are, are uh, specific to a certain file format or certain document format. Um, and they have all kind of slightly different APIs and different ways of accessing stuff. Uh, different ways of, of presenting the extracted text or presenting the, the metadata. So it's really, you need a lot of glue code to, to, to put that all together. Um, and so uh <coughs> in, in 2006, uh, there was a group of people um, around um, Apache Nuts and, and Chuck Rabbit and some uh, projects outside Apache that got together um, and, and realized that, hey, why don't we just, just pull our efforts and build a, a single toolkit that we can all use for, for this specific purpose? And that, that's kind of what led to, to the birth of, of the Tika project. So we went into the Apache incubator, um, spent some while there kind of passing the basic design and then doing some releases and, and building, building up the community. Um, it went pretty well. So we became a Lucene sub project pretty fast. Uh, continued releasing stuff, and, 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 and uh, now we're we a uh, uh, top-level project of our own um, uh, and working towards the 1.0 release. Uh, that's probably going to happen either at the end of this year or sometime next year. Um, it's not a very big project, but it's still a s considerable amount, amount of code, um, basically integration code with all sorts of, of parser libraries. Um, and some kind of core tooling to, to, to bring it all together. Um, there are some statistics, but I'm not going to go too deep into that. Um, the interesting things are here at, at the bottom. We know a lot of document types. 
um, and we can actually process quite a few of them. So, so at this point, um, Tika is already kind of better than 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 95%, 99% of of the kind of custom solutions that people are building uh, for their search engines or, or other applications for for this purpose of extracting text and metadata. So, <coughs> so if you're doing something like that, Tika is is something that you really should be considering. So. Um, that's about the, the kind of high, over, high level overview of things. Let, let's go deeper and see how it actually works. So the simplest thing to do is to grab uh, a single jar file that we publish as part of the Tika release. Uh, it's a standalone jar, a unrunnable jar, so you can just run it um, on the command line and then and, and do basic stuff like extract um, text from a document, metadata, uh, you can get a kind of a XHTML presentation of, of, of the document and so on. Very useful, uh, and you can also use it to kind of as a part of a longer pipeline uh, or, or for, for integration with non-Java environments. Tika is, is written in Java and uses Java libraries, um, so, so you need to, to, to use Java to, uh, to run it. Uh, but this Tika command line tool, the standalone jar, uh, allows you to use it from, say, say within PHP or, or Ruby or, or wherever um, by just, just starting a new process and, and running it. There's also a, a kind of a not that fancy but quite useful uh, testing or, 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 or um, kind of validation tool um, called the Tika GUI. And basically, it starts a simple window and you can drag and drop um, all kinds of files on top of it, and it'll do kind of extract the text from it, extract metadata, and present it here. And it'll also show if there are some parsing errors or, or format errors or some, something that goes wrong. So you can use it to kind of uh, quickly get a feel of, of what's the output like for a specific kind of a document, or to, to debug problems if you say they can't find some, some specific information um, after you've, you've added a document to your search index, for example. Perhaps it is that, that the text extracted from that document actually doesn't contain uh, the stuff that, that you're searching for. There are, for example, some, some, um, some of the more complex document formats that make it really difficult to, to extract specific parts of the document. So, so uh, there may be some, some missing pieces in, in, in the output from Tika. We're, of course, working on that and kind of making the output as, as useful and as, as complete as possible. Um, so um, if you are using Java or one of the kind of languages that, that work on top of the JVM, uh, then it's easier to just, just use Tika as a library. Uh, <coughs> and you'll get uh, quite a bit of extra, uh, extra functionality that way. Um, uh, the basic entry point to, to, to using Tika as a library is, is, is the Tika facade, um, a kind of sing, sing, simple class that we added um, that kind of hides away the internals uh, and, and the kind of more complex uh, functionality within Tika so that you can kind of just use a couple of lines of code uh, in your application and get uh, most of the benefits of, of, of Tika. So here, for example, um, we have T three main uh, methods. One is for, for de detecting the document type um, of a file or, or uh, for example, a network resource or, or whatever. Um, and the other two are, are for parsing the text, uh, kind of getting the text out of the document. Uh, first returns a reader that you can then feed into a Lucene index. Um, um, and then the other one is, is, is for, for if, if you don't want to deal with, with the reader and kind of reading it through and, and, and uh, closing it and so on. You just want a string that you can, for example, store somewhere else, uh, send as a part of a JSON request or, or something like that. And that's quite useful. Um, you may be wondering, kind of, isn't this a, this a problem? I'm going to run out of memory if I just, just request the string of, of the entire content of this, this file. Um, we've thought about that, so there's a kind of built-in size limit to the string that, that you're gonna get out of it. 
So no worries, you won't run out of memory when, when using this method. Um, before we go further, um, there's a few points I need to make about kind of handling uh, all these dependencies, all the uh, parser libraries that Tika uses to, to do its thing. Um, the easy thing is, is to use the Tika application or Tika app jar. It's basically a bundle of everything that Tika needs. So you only need it and, and uh, Java 5 or higher. Um, and that's it. Uh, if you want more control over kind of, oh yeah, I'm, I'm not going to be dealing with, with uh, say, say Microsoft Office documents. So I don't need the extra, extra libraries there. Um, you can use a uh, uh, dependency tool like, like Maven or Ivy to control what, what kind of libraries you are, you are adding to your application. Um, currently, the Maven dependency for using um, Tika uh, 0.7 is, is shown there. Um, this dependency kind of brings in a lot of libraries, um, including um, some logging libraries. Uh, for example, some of the parser Parsers that we use um, are pretty complex and they have their own, their own logging requirements and so on. So, so they have dependencies to, to log for J and, and commons logging and stuff like that. Uh, if you use TCOP without uh, kind of specifying nothing else, you'll get those dependencies too and they may conflict with your, your own logging needs. So you'll need to pay some attention to that. Uh, you can use, for example, in Maven, you can use exclusions. Ivy has a similar concept, so you can kind of control what gets included, but you need to make sure that, that all the kind of logging APIs used by the Tika parsers are still there. Um, otherwise, they, they'll, they'll fail with, with um, class not found exceptions or so on. Uh, the jars are pretty large um, if you get everything, kind of all the parser libraries. Uh, currently at 0.7, we're at 70 megabytes I expect that, that by the time we reach uh, 1.0, we're, we're way beyond 20 megabytes uh, for the full Tika package. Uh, if you only need type detection and, and, and some of the simpler features of Tika, you can get by with, with just the Tika core uh, jar that, that's um, a lot smaller and more compact. Um, but unfortunately, then you won't be able to extract text from, from, from documents. So here's the list of the current dependencies, everything we include. Uh, that's quite a few jars, and it's growing. But uh, basically, um, apart from, from the locking, logging dependencies, uh, you don't really need to worry about these too much because they don't really conflict with, with um, many of the normal libraries that you use. Uh, DOM4J is probably the only one uh, that, that, that's really troublesome for, for some application. We're trying to, to get rid of that dependency. Okay, back to the code. Um, so the Tika facet that we showed earlier um, is, is um, kind of good for many use cases, but there are some cases where you need more power, more direct control over over what you, you get and how, how you process, process it. Uh, and for that, uh, there's the Tika parser interface. Um, basically, it's, it's an interface that, that's kind of both targeted for the, for the client to use to access the functionality and also for, for kind of document format providers uh, to implement. Like, uh, say, say I have a um, library that, that, that uh, supports PDF documents. Uh, then I'm going to implement the parser interface um, with support for, for PDF documents. And uh, we're going to walk through how, how this parser interface, that's the kind of central concept in Tika, is, is really works. So first, um, basically the parser interface just has a single, single method called parse, and it takes four arguments. The first one is an input stream uh, containing the document you're going to parse. Um, and it can be ba pretty much any input stream, uh, a file input stream, uh, something you get from a URL, um, something from, from a, a class path, or, or pretty much anything, uh, as long as it's a sequence of bytes. Uh, and, and then Tika can process it that way. Um, 
there's an added uh, thing that we, we're currently including. It's not yet released. Um, uh, supporting class called Tika Input Stream that you can use um, to kind of pass full files to the pa parsing process. That's useful, for example, for some, some document formats that, that are basically designed with, with random access in mind. So um, reading them uh, kind of sequentially from an input stream is, is not very efficient. Uh, you basically need to read the whole, whole stream, store it locally on a temporary file, and then use the parser library to access it in, in a random access manner. Um, this uh, support class allows you to kind of, if you know that you have a local file, and then, then use that to pa pass it to the, to the parser, and you kind of can improve performance that way. Uh, the second argument uh, to the parser, uh, parse method is, is um, an SAX content handler. So um, basically what we get um, as a re result of parsing a document in Tika is, is uh, kind of normalized XHTML uh, representation of, of the document. Uh, this is not a, um, not a kind of a screen ready or a, or a, a rendering for, for, for display, but it's more of a kind of a structured semantic representation of, of the text uh, content in the document. So if possible, we'll, we'll add um, heading, heading tags and, and, and hyperlinks in there and, and perhaps emphasis and, and other stuff like that. Um, and uh, it's delivered to you as SAX events, so, so uh, we can do streaming. Basically, you, you read the input stream and while, while the parser is parsing, it's, it's firing SAX events to your application. So at no, no point of the, of the <coughs> process, you actually need to have the full document in memory. And that's quite useful, for especially for, for larger documents like, like big um, zip archives and stuff like that, that that may kind of require hundreds of megabytes of, of, of memory if, if it's pulled into memory. One uh, kind of thing to remember that, that many people uh, kind of don't expect at first is that if you pass an HTML or an XHTML document to Tika, the resulting um, uh, SAX event stream is not one-to-one -one with the input document. We basically, we, we clean up uh, things that, that aren't useful for things like search indexes and stuff li like that. So, so uh, say scripts or, or inline styles or, or stuff like that uh, gets stripped away basically to, to make it easier to, to just pull it into a search index without having uh, extra stuff there that, that no one's actually seeing when they look at the screen. Later on, we, we may well kind of integrate some kind of a internal um, uh, kind of in-memory rendering of the HTML page so we can actually say um, what the page looks like to a user um, and then only kind of ex um, uh, give out that text that the user actually sees in the order that the user sees it. Um, currently, there's a patch in Tika for, for, for stripping, for example, all the navigational um, decoration of a page. Um, that, that's using a kind of a external library for doing that. Um, then the next argument to the parse method, it's, it's called metadata. It's for passing uh, metadata both into the parsing process and then out of it. So uh, for example, you may have uh, know the name of the file uh, or the resource that you're processing, uh, and that may be useful for, for, for better detecting what the type of the file is. For example, there may be a type extension to the file name or so something like that, like that. So you can then pass it into the parsing process um, so that Tika can, can take benefit from that extra information that you had available. And then once the parser returns any kind of embedded metadata in the document like title, author information, uh, there are a lot, lot of different types of um, metadata um, shown here that, that you can get out of, of, of various kinds of documents. And that all is, is, is reported through the metadata object and you can 
kind of basically just just feed that into a search index or wherever you want to use it. Currently, the metadata is is, is pretty much document format specific, so so you'll need to first check what the format of this document is, and then kind of figure out that okay, a document of this type has this uh, these kinds of metadata. Um, we're planning to kind of um, add some form of normalization so you could use better things like Dublin Core um, and other metadata standards to, to kind of simplify your code that uses Tika. Basically, whenever there's a subject or a title in the document, then uh, the output should be using the standard Dublin Core uh, metadata fields for that. It's also possible that, that we'll, we'll modify the metadata object to use use something like XMP, uh, it's Adobe's uh, metadata uh, format um, for kind of a more complex, expressing more complex metadata information. Also for things like, like thumbnail images and, and stuff like that. The last argument uh, to the parse method is a parsing context. Um, basically a way to, to pass in um, information that's kind of not um, specific to, to, to a single document, but specific to the way you want documents to be processed, kind of the environment in which um, you process the documents. So here's a few examples. Um, as I mentioned, there's um, the default behavior is for, for Tika to kind of clean up your incoming HTML you can actually disable that behavior and replace another strategy of how, how to process HTML by passing a, a HTML mapper um, instance uh, through the parsing context. Also, um, when Tika is parsing uh, component documents or kind of um, packages like, like zip archives uh, or stuff like that, uh, then the default, default behavior of Tika is, is to kind of take the parser and then for each component document, use the same parser again. So, um, and then kind of combine the results um, to be given to the user. If you want to do stuff like, okay, I want to um, store these component documents as separate, um, separate records in, in, in my database or search index, um, then you can pass in a separate parser implementation to that, and then Tika will automatically call that parser with each component document at a time. Um, the final example is, is, is passing locale information. There are document formats that are basically dependent on, on where they are viewed. Basically what they look like is dependent on where you are. Um, for example, uh, Microsoft Excel is, 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 is notorious for this. Uh, the numbers um, that you see on the screen look different depending on, on uh, where you are and, and in, in what locale your, your computer is. So um, by default, um, Tika will use the default locale of your, your, um, your, your computer, um, but that's a little bit troublesome because then kind of you may get different uh, results depending on where you're running your application. Um, basically take the same input and get different results and that's not so nice. So a good idea is to actually decide upfront which locale you're gonna use um, and then pass that through the parsing context. Um, luckily this is, for most use cases, this isn't that important. It's, it's a kind of a fairly narrow set of, of, of documents and, 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 and text within those documents that, that, that's actually affected by by this, but, um, but it's good to know that, that you can do that and, and, and that at some times if you don't do that then it may cause some surprising results. So uh, finally, uh, about the parser interface, um, there's the implementation classes. Tika comes with quite a few uh, parsers. Basically there's a parser for, for all the document formats that we support. Um, and then there's also a couple of kind of generic um, um, parsers that you can use um, uh, for, 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 for all kinds of functionality. There's a uh, kind of an empty parser that just doesn't do anything. You can use it basically for testing or for, for, uh, for, for test cases 
basically as a mock uh, class. And then there is um, the auto detect parser that's probably the most useful parser inter inter implementation there is. <coughs> what it does, it basically uh, uses the, the type detection functionality within Pika to, to look at the first few bytes of, of the document or the, the, the file name of the document or whatever uh, other information you have. For example, you may have downloaded the document from from the web, so you have a content type header there somewhere with a more or less reliable uh, MIME type included. So the auto de detect parser will take all this information into account, de decide what the type of the document is, and then based on that information, will select the specific um, parser implementation for that specific document type. And then kind of uh, you'll get the results um, uh, you need. So what are the kind of document uh, parsers that we use? Um, currently, we're using PDF box for PDF documents, POI for, for Microsoft formats, uh, HTML is, is uh, processed by TagSoup. That's uh, kind of a very relaxed um, um, library that can pretty much uh, produce reasonably accurate results from, from all sorts of weird looking HTML that you can see on the net. Uh, a couple of other libraries that we're using. Um, basically, everything uh, that Tika uses is, is uh, compatible with, with the Apache license, so uh, you'll have no trouble uh, using it in, in proprietary applications if you need. There are some cases and some formats for, for which um, only um, uh, GPL or ELF GPL libraries exist. Um, and for those, um, basically, the idea is that, that uh, you can do um, um, kind of a glue library for that, implement the Tika parser interface uh, for that specific library, and then just add it to the class path of your application, and Tika will automatically pick up those extra, extra libraries uh, when, the, when it finds them. So you can still use those libraries, but you'll need to do some extra work to do that. Uh, and finally, the parse method will throw some exceptions uh, depending on whether it could read the, read the document, whether there was a parsing error, or whether your application uh, failed in, in processing the SAC stream. Um, and then, kind of, uh, you don't necessarily have to actually use the Tika API yourself if you're using some of the uh, tools that already implement Tika integration. Uh, Solar is the most notable e uh, example of those. Um, you can use the extracting request handler to send in binary documents to Solar, and it will automatically use Tika to extract the text out of those documents and then uh, use that to, to index the document. Also, projects like, like Nudge and Jackrabbit um, and, and Uima and, and a bunch of others are, are already integrating Tika. So if you're using some of these applications, you don't necessarily need to need to do the integration yourself. So uh, that's about it. Um, any questions? Hi. Yeah. I'm running a media monitoring news search engine. And when I have uh, newspaper articles or blog articles, there's the main text and the block roll or the part with all the advertisement. Do you know anything that already exists as open source to detect where's the main text of a document and where's the rest I don't like? Okay, so uh, the question about was about kind of detecting from a web page what, what's the kind of uh, main text of the document and what's uh, extra stuff that, that you have uh, kind of decorating the document. Um, there are such libraries, and we're actually currently integrating one uh, to Tika. Uh, the one we're using is called Boilerpipe. And, um, and we have a patch uh, in the Tika issue tracker that, that integrates it. It's probably at first going to be a kind of optional feature that you need to, to, to explicitly enable for use with Tika, uh, as uh, some of the results of it aren't that uh, kind of accurate 
uh, but but for some use cases, for example, some of the big news sites, it does amazingly well. So um, so yeah, there is stuff like that, and then there's development, ongoing development on on that front. Yeah. There's a question from Grant and Nick also. Dealing with archive documents like zip and jars and all those things, how well does Tika, Tika handle those? Uh, so the question was about archive formats and how well we do that. Uh, we actually kind of um, uh, handling archive formats well uh, was one of the kind of key goals we had. Um, so we've done quite a lot of design work on, on doing that well. Uh, basically, by default, you'll get um, uh, the text extracts both from the container and from each uh, subcomponent, kind of basically a uh, document that, that's included in the archive. And that's just uh, bundled into a one big uh, XHTML stream. Uh, and then the trick I showed you earlier about using the parse context to pass in a custom parser, you can use that to, to then kind of process each of these uh, um, subdocuments uh, separately. So yeah, there was, uh, Nick had a question and then we have one here. I was just gonna ask about embedded documents inside other ones, but I think you basically covered that. Yeah, um, embedded documents. Uh, currently, uh, the kind of archive support is, is, is best um, uh, implemented for, for real archives like, like chip archives and, and, and tarballs and stuff like that. But the plan is to use this very same mechanism also for, for attachments in, in PDFs or Office documents or email attachments and stuff like that. Um, that's only partially implemented at the moment, so, so that, that's still something to work on. Do you yes. plan to uh, integrate more functionality for scraping metadata that is not marked up, similar to the first question? Uh, sorry? Do you plan to integrate more uh, tools to extract metadata that is not marked up? Oh yeah, um, question was about kind of integrating um, more tools that, that kind of can, can extract metadata and annotate the document uh, in ways that, um, uh, for, for information that's not explicitly marked up in the document. Um, basically, uh, the base use case for Tika is, is to just, um, just express the information that you already have in the document. But uh, we think that the kind of current design we have and the XHTML output that we have is pretty well suited for also kind of uh, doing, doing natural language processing and annotation based on that or other ty types of processing. Um, so, so I think we'll see some of those integrations coming on later on. There was still a question. I think we're running out of time then. I have a question regarding yeah. the locale stuff. Um, obviously, what it, what it, when you're dealing with multi-language stuff, and I assume coming from Switzerland, you have to deal with that. Um, yeah. You know, when I don't know when the locales are all over the place, and does Tika handle that at all? Um, about multiple languages, uh, yes, uh, we have um, kind of um, a part of a code uh, that we inherited from from the Nuts project that that has a simple. Um, ngram-based language detection mechanism. It's currently an optional feature for Tika, but you can enable it on top of the parser uh, interface, uh, and it will tell you what kind of, make a best guess of, of what the language of this document is. Um, it's not too accurate at the moment, so, so we're going to work on that later on. Um, another thing that, that we're planning to do is, is better kind of embed language in information into the into the XHTML document so that you could um, have annotations that, okay, this part of the document is, is in French and this part is, is in German and, and so on. So, because there are quite a few of documents that, that actually aren't entirely in this language or entirely in that language, but they're a mix. So, so again, using XHTML for such information um, is, is what we're planning to do. And it's also an example of this kind of information that's not necessarily encoded in the document itself, but what's, what would be very in, in, uh, kind of, uh, very useful for certain applications to know about. So yes, thank you. Um, 
as I said, you can find the slides slides online. Uh, I guess they'll be on the on the password side as well in, in a short while. And uh, if you have more questions, I'll be here until tomorrow afternoon. So feel free to drop a note or ask me. <laughs> <laughs>